This year is the 15th anniversary of Minecraft, and I'm still finding that kind of hard to believe. This game has changed a lot in those 15 years. It's crazy to think that a block placing game made by a small indie developer would eventually become everything it is today. This didn't happen all at once. There have been a lot of updates that have brought us to this point. There have currently been 21 major updates for Minecraft, and I would like to start a series where I do an in-depth analysis for all of them. And what better place to start than with a recent update that just so happens to be celebrating its 5th anniversary. Looking back on the Village and Pillage update, this was one of the most influential updates in Minecraft's history, and I think it was the beginning of the modern Minecraft age we see today. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the lasting impact this update has left on Minecraft, the things it did right and wrong, and how this update compares to modern Minecraft updates. At the end, I'll rank it on a tier list to see how it compares to all of the other updates the game has had. But before we start, I'm the Dandelorian. If you like this kind of content and want to see more, please subscribe. We're trying to reach 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year, so every person counts. Now let's talk about the Village and Pillage update. The Village and Pillage update was announced on September 28th, 2018 at Minecon Earth. It was then released seven months later on April 23rd, 2019. This update's purpose was to rework villages into an actually usable system. They added new villager professions in a profession system, new villager variants completely reworked the old villages, and added a new trade system that makes a lot more sense. For the pillager side of things, they added new illager mobs, pillager outposts, and raids. But, in addition to all that, they added a new biome, the Bamboo Jungle, new useful and decorative blocks, and the first biome vote results with foxes, campfires, and sweetberries. This update was stacked with content, a lot of it I didn't even mention. But let's be honest, not every feature Mojang adds is going to leave an impression on people. For example, 1.20, the Trails and Tales update, had a similar amount of content as the Village and Pillage update, but I don't think it's nearly as well remembered or liked. Stuff like armor trims and cherry groves are a lot more impactful than things like camels or archaeology. So what was the most impactful stuff from this update? Well, the number one biggest thing this update did is not something I mentioned earlier. If you went back in time before this update and showed a Minecraft player Minecraft... Well, you know what? I'll just show you. Be back in a sec. Hey man, I'm from the future. Okay, sweet. You play Minecraft? Yeah? Cool, cool. Can I show you what Minecraft looks like in the future? Sure. No. Okay, well I'm gonna go now. Wait, what did you do? Why do we have the same voice? In case that wasn't obvious enough, 1.14 changed nearly every texture in Minecraft. This was an extremely bold move. When you have a game as popular as Minecraft, the look of the game becomes iconic. To change that would be very risky, but I think it absolutely paid off. Mojang realized that for the biggest game in the world, well, it was right behind Tetris at the time, but that doesn't really matter, this wasn't cutting it. It did take them a few tries, but almost everything that was changed looks far better in my opinion than it did before. Not everyone feels this way, but Mojang was cool enough to leave the old art as a permanent texture pack on both versions of Minecraft. That way, those who don't like the new textures can still use the old ones. This was a great way to handle any criticisms that might have come up. Changing the textures allowed for a more unified art style for future blocks that would be added. Even though this only changed the look of the game, it's left a very big impact. Like I said earlier, I think this update helped usher in the new age of Minecraft. People were beginning to come back to Minecraft after a long hiatus at the time, and changing something as simple as the look helped the game seem fresh. I don't think Mojang had any idea that the game was about to get a big boost in popularity, but the timing of this was perfect, and people stuck around for longer, helping the modern age of Minecraft happen. So the texture update was pretty important, but what else did this update do? In an update titled Village and Pillage, you would hope that villages would get some good stuff, and they definitely did. Every village was completely transformed. Before, villages all kind of looked the same, just made of different materials. But with this update, the new villages bring so much more life into the world. They gave every village its own buildings for different categories. The developers talked about how they tried to only use materials that would be available in those biomes. These structures are pretty common, so what they add to the world really matters. Each village variant looks like it has its own story to tell, and makes the villagers seem so much more alive. 
which is really too bad considering what this update made us do to villagers. Villagers were buffed a lot in this update, to the point of being borderline overpowered. If you have any sort of long-term survival world and you don't have a villager trading system set up, you're missing out big time. The most optimized way to trade with villagers is to capture them, put them in little cells, and feed them to zombies. But you get an easy way to get a ton of items, so it's all completely worth it. Villager trading was one of the most impactful parts of this update. It completely changed how we get some items, and nearly every long-term Minecraft player has spent a lot of time with villagers. Even though this feature is kind of broken and probably needs to be nerfed, like the changes in the villager trade rebalances, it's really annoying to move and aggressively negotiate with these guys, so it kind of balances out. The last thing I want to talk about is the raid. When you killed a pillager captain, you would get the bad omen effect. This has since been changed, but the general idea is still the same. Entering a village with bad omen starts the raid. Waves of illagers come out to try to kill the villagers. If you defeat them, you get the effect hero of the village and get discounts on trade prices. These also spawn with evokers, which makes it an easy way to get totems of undying. This is very important, because if you set up a raid farm, you can become basically immortal. I think this is a bit too broken, but I can't deny it's left a big impact on modern Minecraft. So now we've talked about the things I think defined this update and made it memorable. But was it good at what it did? For the most part, I think so. Like I mentioned earlier, this update added a lot of new life to the world, in the form of new villages, biomes, and mobs. I find myself more excited when I find a village than I did before. It fixed a lot of problems I had with the villagers and made people actually use them. But if I had to say something this update did wrong, it was making some things a little too powerful. Villagers can get you items way easier, and while it's difficult to set up, once you do, you can basically have everything they sell for free. I think there's a lot of things they could do to make this better, but I don't think they need to do too much. The villager trade rebalances are a good start, and giving more villager professions biome-specific trades is a good idea. But I don't think the solution lies in making it even harder to get what you want. If they could make it so you can't get infinite stuff at all, that would be the best solution. I don't want Mojang to make villagers bad again, but there should be at least some meaningful cost when working with villagers. The other main thing I think is a bit overpowered is getting Totems of Undying from raids. Before raids, Totems felt more like enchanted golden apples. They were rare, extremely powerful items. Now I can have chestfuls of them and it's not that big of a deal. These things let you cheat death, so they should be rare or hard to get. One way to fix this would be not to let evokers spawn in raids, but I like the challenge they offer. So my other idea is to simply not let evokers drop totems. Maybe they could drop experience bottles or something else. Totems would become exclusive to woodland mansions by only spawning in chests. One other problem I have with this update is that it had a lot of unfinished concepts. Jungle and Swamp villagers, smithing tables, and fletching tables were all introduced to the game before they were completely finished. The smithing table got a use in 1.16, and that use was improved in 1.20, but the other things are still not finished. It's one thing to add a functioning item and then improve on the uses later, but for some reason, these things were added without having uses. There are still no swamp and jungle villages, and the fletching table only works as a profession block. We haven't really seen anything like this in recent updates, except during Caves and Cliffs when the update was split into two parts, but that was finished right away so it isn't as bad. Hopefully we'll get these things soon, but it does bring down the quality of Village and Pillage as a whole. Okay, now that we've talked about what this update did, and if it did a good job, let's talk about how this update compares to modern Minecraft updates. And honestly, this might be nostalgia talking, but I think this update is still one of the best updates of all time. Don't get me wrong, some of the updates that have come up since this update are way better, but I feel like the last few updates just aren't nearly as good as this one. For example, 1.21 is very similar to this update in that it has one purpose that it fulfills exceptionally well. I would argue that the Tricky Trials update did a better job on its main purpose because trial chambers are incredible. But Village and Pillage had other stuff that made it feel like this update was more fleshed out. Whereas 1.21 has... The Crafter? A few new paintings? These are good features, but I don't feel like it's enough. The Trails and Tales update has the exact opposite problem. Its content is too spread out, and a lot of it is too insignificant to make it feel like it's leaving an impact. I like both of these updates, but the Village and Pillage is just better at what it was trying to do. Which brings me to the last part of this video, the tier list. I'm going to give the Village and Pillage update a high A tier. 
There are still updates that are better than this one, but it has all the hallmarks of a very solid update. It left a significant impact on Minecraft as a whole and did a good job at it. It was well-rounded and had something for everyone to enjoy. But with that, that's my review of the 1.14 update. What did you guys think? Was there something I missed? Let me know in the comments. That tier list is pretty empty right now, and I'd like to add more to it. Let me know what update you want me to cover next. But anyways, have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Oh, good. You're back. You're gonna fix this, right? So, I can't have you messing up the timeline. Are you okay with blipping out of existence? What? No. Okay. Wait, what did that do?